Good evening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that song that we started off this devotional with. Uh, that's one of my favorite ones. It's one of the newer songs that we've been playing at church, and we've been trying to learn it. And I hope you uh, might go back and watch it again and listen to it. And that way, when we get back to church together, uh, when we have it singing again, we can all share in the sounds of fellowship and praises to God uh, with that song. Savior, lead me lest I stray. Many times in our lives we uh, stray and we fall off the path of what Jesus has intended for us and where he wants us to go. And we need to be following him each and every day. This time at home this week, I've been, I've been stuck here at the house and just been studying from home and staying off the roadways like they've asked us to and just uh, been just trying to stay safe and um, been spending some time with the family, but also been trying to spend some time in study. And thinking about uh, tonight, instead of bringing you my Bible class lesson that I usually do on Wednesday night, I'm just going to pause that for a week and share this devotional that you can share with uh, one another, uh, not only adults, but teenagers and even for kids. And I'm filming to you from my basement here at the house, and technology's wonderful and didn't have this the last time um, we had this kind of a big storm. But I uh, just wanted to share this time with you in this devotional. And while I was down here looking at stuff and trying to prepare for things, I saw a picture up on my wall. It's to the right of me, uh, right here on my wall, that my sister did for my wife, Nisha. And it was a article that my wife wrote back in 2015, one of the last big storms we had, about following the path and finding your path. And it just, this is really not, this isn't my devotional. This is the devotional to you from her. Because I'd like to read that with you. And it, it just um, has a great message for all of us and what we need to do. And how we need to be. Um, she was lucky enough. Um, 
I turned it in and she turned it in as well. I was like, I saw some different things and we was getting Christian woman magazine at the church building. And I was like, man, this would be a good article for them to have. And Nisha was like, yeah, sure. Go ahead and send it in. Maybe they'll use it. And Nisha did the same. You know, we, we kind of talked about it and we was like, yeah, we'll send it in for you. And if they use it, they use it. If they don't, they don't. But it's a, it's a good article and they published it in their November, December 2016th edition. It made me so proud of my wife uh, being able to share this passage, uh, share this message. And um, like I said, my sister Betty Jane made a uh, frame for it and I have it hanging on my wall down here in my little office area here in the basement. But I'd like to share this with you. Finding the Father's Path by Denisha Kirby. Said last winter, my loving bluegrass state was pounded by a winter storm that our region hadn't seen in many years. I'm talking state of emergency level snowfall. Living in the south, we don't experience more than 10 inches of snow very often. So when my husband announced that he was going to head out to check on the cows and feed our dear pot belly pig, Ruby, who lived across the field, my five-year-old immediately jumped at the opportunity to help his daddy. What sons doesn't idolize his father in every way at five years old. The snow had lightened a little, but was still falling. I was nervous about letting him go and feared his little legs would give out before they had made the round trip trek across the cow pasture. But I relented. After many layers of clothing had been tugged on and boots tight, tightly laced, they set off across the field with walking sticks in hand. I stayed indoors. Being the southern girl I am, I wasn't about to bundle up and tread through all that snow. So I raced upon, excuse me, I raced upstairs to the playroom where the window faces the field to witness them making their way safely through the field. With my iPhone in hand, ready to snap some pictures of the, of the two, of course, I hear the following conversation. Come on, son. I can't stand up. Walk in my footsteps, son. Stay in my path and you'll be fine. That is hard. Look where you're going and stop playing around. Dad, it's too hard. The mama bear in me leaned out the window and said, bring him back in here. My dear, sweet, loving, stubborn husband, yeah, that's me, said, no, he's come this far. He can come with me. Then he turned to our son, who is five years old, remember, at this time, and said, come on. You can do it. We don't have all that far to go. And then I thought to myself, there's a Bible lesson there in this somewhere. It's as if the Spirit, Holy Spirit reminded me of Psalms chapter 5, verse 8, which says, Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make straight your way before me. It called to mind John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. And she also quotes Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. How many times have we been like my son? Making our way through hard times, tired, feeling small, cold and all alone how many times have we looked up to our heavenly father and said it's too hard i'll be the first to admit i've had my share of those moments i found myself on my knees sorting through feelings of heartache confusion and self-doubt and then i hear him whisper get up follow my path i've already made it straight for you why are you making this hard on yourself sometimes we need the gentle reminder that God is with us. He is always here. He has never left us. And he knows what we are facing. If only we will trust in him instead of ourselves. Just as my husband said, walk in my footsteps. Follow my path and you'll be fine, son. We only need to listen. Our Heavenly Father wants us to look to him when things get hard. 
God, the creator of all things, wants us, little old us, to look to him for help. He adores us. Didn't you know that? He loves us so much and wants us to be in our be in his company. He wants us to pray and communicate with him daily, continually, or without ceasing. And we know that from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18. God is ultimately leading us to our reward because he believes in us. Just as my husband was guiding our son along their adventurous walk that afternoon, God the Father is guiding us in our Christian walk. No, our walk isn't par perfect. Far from it. Sometimes we struggle to stay upright, but it is all worth the effort. Our reward is waiting for us. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us because he loves us so. Oh, and my sweet son, he made it there and back because his daddy believed in him. And this mama bear had some hot chocolate waiting for him when he got back home. Again, that was written by my wife, Denisha Kirby. And that was that winter of 2015 when we got all that snow here in Franklin. And we were stuck at home for an amount of time. I'm so proud of her for doing that. And I appreciate um, Christian Woman publishing that for her back in November, December 2016. It means so much to me to see that, as I said, up here on my wall. But those words that come to us from her and from the Bible need to be written on our hearts daily. Not just when it snows. Not when it's just raining outside. Not when the sun is shining. Each and every day, we need to be following in the footsteps of Jesus. When our feet first hit the floor out of bed and we're getting ready for our day, we need to be following in the footsteps of Jesus. Oh, what a place, what a wonderful place he has prepared for us. But we are only going to be able to see that if we're doing each and everything that we need to do in our daily walk. I hope and pray that during these times, during the pandemic, during other times that you've been stuck at home, and especially maybe now during this this uh, snow and ice that we've been getting and stuck at home. Maybe you've been meditating upon that. Maybe you've been thinking upon that a little bit. Maybe you haven't. I hope this devotional sees you well that you can focus your attention back upon God. And then when the snow clears and we're back out in the world, we can share that with others around us. We can love on our brothers and sisters in Christ and we can get back to church and doing the things that we know and love to do. But all of it is nothing if we're not following in the footsteps of Jesus. What a great day that will be when we can follow in those footsteps of Jesus to him, following him to heaven. When he um, opens up his arms and says, good and faithful servant, welcome home. I hope you're following in those footsteps. And I'd like to close with a prayer for us tonight. And then I'll leave you with a song. And at the end of this video, there'll be a few announcements and other things at the end that um, pertain to church. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful uh, blessings that you bestow upon us. We pray that you are with us during this time. Um, not only during the pandemic and things that are going on, but during these uh, times of maybe sheltering in place or being safe and staying off the roadways. And for those that do have to travel and do have to get out, we pray that you uh, watch over them and everyone be uh, are smart and do the things that they need to do to um, take precautions and just keep them safe on their journeys. Dear Father, we thank you for this devotional time that we have tonight that we can share with one another. And I pray that these words, and I thank you again for those words become on the um, lips and minds of my wife when she wrote that um, six years ago, um, goes out to those that are listening to this message and thankful for 
her bringing us back to where we need to be, finding our path with you and making sure that we are following in your footsteps. Thank you so much for all the blessings that you give us. We pray for all those that are dealing with sickness or illness. We pray for uh, the Chaffin and White family that lost a loved one this week. We pray for others that are suffering with uh, COVID issues and other things that are going on in their life. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ the world over. Again, dear Father, we just ask all these blessings that you give us in your son's name and his precious name. The love of Jesus. Amen. Thank you again for joining us tonight. I hope this message uh, sees you well and that you enjoyed it. Um, again, that devotional was just maybe some of my thoughts and words, but most of that devotional was from my wife. And again, I want to give her props and thank her for that wonderful thought she had um, many years ago. Uh, Brooks and I did make it across the field. We was able to feed the cows and and feed the pig, and we made it back safe. And we, we've been doing the same thing this week, uh, feeding the cows, breaking the ice, feeding the pig, but snow's not as deep. But um, it might be a little bit deeper in the morning. I uh, pray that it's not. But if you are out on the roadways, please be careful. Um, if you're in need of anything, uh, please let us know, and we'll try to get you some help the best we know how and possible. And we just hope everything clears up by this coming Sunday where we can see you back in our worship services and be with you again. Uh, again, thank you for joining us tonight. May God bless you and your family. Good night. Sweetly, Lord, have we heard the calling, come follow me. And we see where thy footprints falling lead us to thee. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where they go. If they lead through the temple, only preaching the word. Or in homes of the poor and lowly serving the Lord. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where they go. Then at last when on high he sees us our journey done. We will rest where the steps of Jesus stand at his throne. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where